All right. So this first question, it some version of it seems to pop up from time to time, but especially with the the way that the conversations have gone here with the the portal and and you know that we talked about the NIL tax. It seemed like it was fair to hit up Quacker McGee's question from the big old bag of mail. Again, you leave us a five star review. In that review, uh, you put your question. We will grab it. We will throw it in the big old bag of mail. Quacker McGee says. Hey, y'all love the show. Just started listening this year, and I've gotten more into college football than I've been for more than five years. We love to hear that. My bail bag question is this. What player or players in the last 10 to 20 years before NIL and the transfer portal do you think would have benefited most from its existence? Either because they were a stud in college who, who never stood a chance of making it to the NFL, so they could have gotten multiple bags in college, or because they would have benefited from transferring to another school where they would have been a better fit and boosted their draft stock. Thanks, Quacker McGee. Tim Tebow. Yes. That's on my list. Mm -hmm. Do we think that's... Um, yeah. yeah, because I, I think he transcends just the Gators because it's Team Jesus, and he was so out there with it. I think that is so marketable. And he also was really good, like impactful as a freshman in those sub packages. He won the Heisman as a sophomore, so he's a returning Heisman guy. I I just wrote down one name when I looked at this question. Like, <laughs> like to me, it, it's Tebow by a mile. Plus, yeah, I mean, he still has marketing appeal now, and he hasn't. I mean, what has he done right in any recent time frame to be like, oh, I understand why that guy's still getting commercials. Yeah, I think Tebow is the poster boy for this question. I think I going further back. I kind of approach this more from a aspect of guys who, when it comes to benefit, like didn't have great pro careers. They were great college players. Cause I think if you look at it that way, like Cam Newton would have made a ton of money in an IL, but then he went on to make a ton of money in the NFL. So how much of a great benefit was it? But like guys like Tebow who didn't have long NFL careers, Tommy Frazier, Eric Crouch, all those kind of guys who had fantastic college careers, but were not really NFL players. I think Brian Bosworth would have made a ton of money because he was, like a social media superstar 40 years before mm. social media existed. I think he would have made a ton of, I mean, but as far as like the transfer one, I didn't really consider that, but the first name that popped into my head, do you think there is any way in hell Calvin Johnson finishes his career at Georgia tech? If he was able to transfer in the transfer portal NIL era, that man would have made a lot of money somewhere. So and he I likes Georgia tech. Like he comes back to events, yeah. and stuff, but still no Reggie ball was throwing the ball. And I use the word throwing generously there. He was so, heaving. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Vaz. Jared Lorenzen, I mean, you know, he he had a passionate fan base that was rocking and rolling. I for the Cam Newton, you think you probably have the NIL just to get to Florida, right? Mm -hmm. So then you leave Florida, then you get to reopen negotiations again. I mean, that sounds like you get multiple times at the pay window. Cam Newton's got to be on there for sure. He might have been Tebow before Tebow because he wouldn't have had to steal a laptop. <laughs> he would have been able to If, whoa, yeah. sliding doors. If NIL were around, yes. then maybe. maybe Cam Newton doesn't allegedly take the laptop. <laughs> I thought about this kind of differently, like Tom did, because I think there's obviously the obvious big names of college football history who would have crushed it. Most of those names did crush it anyway. So it was like, who would have it been like life-changing for? I thought about... Like Tom, like Tom said, some of the guys who didn't have NFL careers, but even like the baseline, like you hear some of the numbers that are just going out like a Texas offensive lineman. Or what I've thought about a lot was the amount of players who left early because they had to. Mm -hmm. And they became, and guys that we don't even know their names, a lot of them, but they left early. Maybe they were a seventh round pick. Maybe they went undrafted. They get cut. They never played again. They could have come back, made more money than they would have made in the NFL, maybe increased their draft stock. You know, I just th – those are the guys that I think probably – those are like the sad stories we never heard about that it would have really benefited them the most that never had a chance and could have really get a head start on life if they would have had some money and maybe even changed their NFL path if they had another year of development. Denard Robinson. I yeah. think that – and one thing that I was looking at for this, and this is so nerdy, but again, there's a lot of different ways to attack this question, which is one of the reasons why I was glad that we were able to get a lot of different responses. So I've got like March 06 as when YouTube really takes off. And I started to think like, who were the true highlight real players in, those, in that era? 
and Shoelace was up there. Percy Harvin was up there. A lot of people. Steve Slayton. Listen, Steve Slayton and Pat White could have been able to make a buck because a lot of the ways that you know you think about um, you know the popularity, it's kind of a what kind of a star you are, and in that post YouTube era, our stars were created by highlights more so than stats. I mean, we remember Denard Robinson scoring that touchdown in its very first snap. And we're like, whoa, who is this? And you think about the money that would have been there for him behind Michigan. I feel like Shoelace could have uh, could have made a, a decent dent uh, in the in the NIL era, given his style of play, the time around like 09, 2010 or so, and then also the the school that he played for with that kind of you know recognizable stature. Tavon Austin and DeAnthony Thomas as well. Oh Just man, DeAnthony Thomas's uh, highlight reels are insane. Um, one who probably would have never been at Marshall had the, the rules been around today because weed's legal now in, in a lot of states. But if you actually had Randy Moss sitting at Marshall, like the bidding war for Randy Moss to get his sophomore or junior season would be, uh, we said Caleb Downs was the best player ever in the portal who's not a quarterback. Uh, Randy Moss would, would be uh, the new one there. You mean the one that DK was trying to get on the field? Yes, <laughs> that one. Like, dude, can you imagine that the bag Randy would have got? Oh my god, dude, unfair! Off the charts, cheat code. Yeah, obviously the answer is Danny Cannell. Danny That's right. Cannell cashed in. Danny would have made more money. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I would look, be working eighteen jobs now. But I still would have lost it in the day trading career. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Just would have hurt more. Probably would have burned a little deeper. Uh, Peter Work could have got an actual deal with Dillard instead of suspended. <laughs> I mean, Again, is... a lot of these issues might have been avoided if they yeah. actually had money. They wouldn't have had to go steal stuff. You know who? Here's a name. Ron Paulus would have made a ton of money. Any oh, Notre yeah. Dame quarterback during the era where they were kind of stuck in, uh, I guess, Brady purgatory. Quinn. Our boy Brady Quinn. Dude, Brady, Brady would have cashed in. Yeah, he yeah, they would have, like they would have all cashed in huge because Notre Dame would have had obviously the financial support from boosters and they would have had the desire to be like, please just for the love of God, be the guy that can get us back to glory. Brady had the wins record till Ian book broke it. Does that sound yep. right? Um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. that Just being around for that long and being a part of that many wins. I mean, you're, you're able it, to, uh, I actually talked to Brady about this in the hall one time at, uh, at the HQ studio. He's the all-time leading passer at Notre Dame. Did Sam Hartman like get that as a Notre Dame quarterback? <laughs> he doesn't get that because I know. No. And Brady and I were, I was like, that's messed up if he did. No, he only gets the yards he threw in that uniform. Yeah, there's no way that that okay. should not count. All right, I mean, good. Brady's got that record for like three thousand yards. So yeah, he's gonna but Sam Hartman a had a chance in like six years to get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, he he does. If he had been at Notre Dame for six years, right. Then yeah, he he would have been able to do it, but there's there's no way they would have let Sam throw the ball that much. <laughs> Mike Mike Vick as well. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. That like, goes into the highlight reel. Even though YouTube was definitely not around uh, at that point, we were still about less than a decade out. But I think that uh, that's a that's somebody who everyone was watching. That that right. comes with the explosion of Sports Center and the idea that like you're waking up and and you're putting it on and you're watching all the highlights because. Virginia Tech would win games in the Big East that were from like the begin kickoff to triple zeros, not entertaining games, you know, like kind of yeah. slogs. But Vic would provide four incredible plays that would win Virginia Tech the game, in addition with likely what a blocked punt or some other beamer ball, you know, stuff along the way. But that's his the experience of Mike Vic distilled down to highlights is incredibly marketable and still is to this day. The other thing too, I don't, I do think there's, you know, people said me in there, or Tommy Frazier, like the explosion of college football. The like, 90s. Yeah, I was, just, but I would say late 90s, like when yeah. game day started, when EA Sports started, I think of 94, 95 was the first game. Like, and then all of a sudden, because I remember getting recruited and some of the pitches was for a lot of schools was we played six games on national television. Like that was the mm -hmm. recruiting pitch. Now, Every game is on. Like just the explosion in popularity, exposure of college football in general, I would say over the last 20, 25, 30 years have been the guys that would have crushed it most, which is yeah, most of the names we've given people. Yeah, I was just thinking along those same lines. I was thinking like LeVar Arrington, 
would have made a ton of money because Penn State and those teams where he was on it were kind of peaking at the right time as far as television was concerned because like Penn State was on every freaking ABC like every week during those years. And then Eddie George, like those guys would have made a ton of money. Um, one last, and then we're gonna say uh, no. David Pollock's a good one in the chat too. Yeah, that is oh. good. One. 